Hi there, HWE 100 students. This is your instructor, James Stevens, back for another audio lecture. This time we are in Chapter 12, Nutrients Involved in Energy, Metabolism, and Blood. Uh, I think when most of us think of nutrients involved in energy metabolism, we instantly think of those B vitamins because they are uh, the nutrients that are so popular in things like energy drinks and other supplements that are designed to provide the body energy or at least purported I should say to provide the body with energy so I'm hoping this chapter and the content PowerPoint slides and activities that you'll be working through help to shed further light perhaps on some misconceptions or outright fallacies about how B vitamins work in the body and that's what I'd like to explore a little bit in our audio lecture time that we have together right now. Uh, I haven't done this in some time, but I, I know I've done it in the past where I have a what I call a test your knowledge or in some cases a check your understanding slide where I throw out some maybe popular viewpoints or statements and I ask you to consider them and whether or not they are true or false. So uh, let's play this fun little game again and we'll see what what happens. So first statement is, if you are tired, taking a B-complex supplement will give you energy. If you are tired, you see that's italicized. Uh, can you just take a B-complex stress formula, as they're often referred to as, and expect that that will give you energy? So I'll give you a moment to ponder that and whether you believe that statement is true or false. You may have a, a family member or a friend or co-worker who perhaps engages in this practice. And so, uh, now that you've given it a moment or two to think about, what I would ask you to consider is the first part, the italicized part of this statement, uh, if you are tired. And think about what causes you or what causes people to be tired. Could be something like a, a bad night of sleep or maybe several bad nights of sleep that cause you to be fatigued. It could be uh, stress, work-related stress, school-related stress, family and life stress cumulatively can make us feel worn down and tired. Poor, uh, poor hydration, deep being dehydrated can make you feel tired. Uh, trying to fit too much into your day or exercising really excessively uh, can make you feel tired. So what am I getting at here? What I'm getting at is that there are lots of things that make us feel tired and simply taking a B-complex supplement with this notion that okay these nutrients are involved in energy metabolism is going to give me energy is is really faulty thinking. Okay if you're tired because you had a bad night of sleep or as I said uh, several bad nights of sleep just taking a B-complex supplement isn't gonna suddenly perk you up and energize you. Okay if you're tired because you're dehydrated you need to drink water. You don't need to take a B-complex supplement necessarily. So if there's a true deficiency in B vitamins then yes provided all those other areas in your life are covered and are not causing you fatigue or tiredness then uh, theoretically if you have a deficiency in these nutrients and you take the B-complex su supplement that would help with energy metabolism but don't think that these B-complex supplements are uh, a magic pill for giving more energy Okay, B vitamins we know are water-soluble vitamins. So because they are water-soluble, does that mean that B vitamins have no risk for toxicity? Uh, and this, and the reason why I, I have this uh, is because many people will take a B-complex supplement and say, oh, they're just, you know, it's harmless. They're water-soluble. You're just going to excrete them out. They're going to come out in your urine, so there's no harm for toxicity. So is that a... Uh, true or false statement? Well, in fact, it is false. Even though a nutrient may be water-soluble, like the B vitamins, like vitamin C, during the time that they're in your body, they can still cause toxicity. Two B vitamins that uh, exhibit toxic effects, known toxic effects, uh, in levels that would be commonly found in certain uh, B-complex supplement products, uh, would be niacin 
and vitamin B6. Both of those can elicit adverse effects. Vitamin B6 could be potentially harmful because it tends to cause irreversible, or I should say it can cause irreversible nerve damage. Uh, it will start off, the early nerve damage will start off as a sensation of numbness and tingling in your extremities, so your fingertips and your toes. Uh, now why do I bring B6 up specifically? Well, there is a very popular product that is out in, in the marketplace that I see commercials for and advertisements quite frequently. It is the, uh, uh, oh, I'm just drawing a blank, the five-hour energy drink. That's what it is. It's the five-hour energy shot, right? This five-hour energy shot has 40 milligrams of vitamin B6. Uh, additionally, I've seen other over-the-counter vitamin products that have up to 200 milligrams of vitamin B6. The UL for vitamin B6, the, that is the uh, tolerable upper intake level at which adverse side effects can be observed, is 100 milligrams. 100 milligrams. But we're all different in the way that we metabolize these nutrients. I, I have known people who take two five-hour energy shots and get in by virtue of doing that 80 milligrams of B6 and they have experienced that numbness and tingling uh, over a period of time of continuously doing that. So you have to be careful. These are water soluble but that doesn't mean that you can just take endless amounts of them and not experience some adverse side effect. They will harm your body during the time or can harm your body during that time that they are inside of you. Okay, there is no harm from excess iron consumption. We know that iron, uh, we know that there's a condition called iron deficiency anemia in which if you are deficient in iron that uh, it causes fatigue, causes problems with uh, brain function and cognition. So um, this is asking something different. If you consume excess iron is there any potential for harm? And the answer is yes. This is a true statement. One of the uh, fastest growing and, and most commonly diagnosed genetic conditions in the U.S. right now is something called hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis. And so some people have this in their genes. Other people can be diagnosed with it later in life. And it's basically uh, a condition of iron overload the body is accumulating too much iron. And iron can get stored in certain uh, organs and tissues, in particular the liver. So excess iron can cause liver damage. Uh, it can also interfere with normal brain function. Uh, it can actually be a cause or uh, can, because it damages the uh, different organs, it can actually cause damage to the pancreas leading to type 2 diabetes. So it's something that people should be aware of. Iron, as you know, is a, is a metal. And if iron uh, as a metal were to get left out in the environment, exposed to air and water from rain, it would oxidize or rust. So if iron builds up in, in your body, of course we have, uh, we have those elements in our body. We have water in our body. We have oxygen. And so over time, that iron can, that excess iron can oxidize. It doesn't rust per se, but it oxidizes and it can create those uh, issues, health issues. Uh, normally, this can be controlled once it's diagnosed. The, the way that it's treated is through getting um, peri basically periodic blood donation or what we call phlebotomy. Some people have so much excess iron, they have to go and... Uh, get iron or donate blood every three months until their iron levels go back down to normal. Uh, the problem is is that many people are misdiagnosed or undiagnosed and they have this iron building up in their body and it's damaging tissues and damaging organs before they're ever diagnosed. And then lastly we're discussing in, uh, in our discussion topic, one of the topics this week is about energy drinks. Energy drinks are an effective and safe way to boost energy. Well, I think we could probably all agree that they're effective. 
uh, just based on their popularity and how many people I see strolling through the Front Range Community College campus on a regular daily basis who, who have these. Uh, they're certainly to me very expensive, uh, if nothing else, in addition to being effective. But are they, are they truly a safe way to boost energy? And so in, in this week's discussion, in that topic, I've asked you to uh, look at some data and read some articles about their safety and then also comment on maybe some natural ways that you that one can boost energy. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, suggestions and recommendations you have for your fellow classmates. Again, probably effective, but the safety track record of these energy drinks is uh, dubious and questionable at best. Okay, a few more things I wanted to cover. Uh, we are, again, in these recent chapters been discussing the micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals do not directly provide energy, okay, because they don't have that substance known as calories or kilocalories. However, the analogy I use is that of an automobile. You know that if, if you want to use a, an automobile to get somewhere, you have to have two things. You have to have fuel, which is the gas, which for our bodies, that would be the kilocalories that come from proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. But you also need to be able to start the car, okay? And, and in order to, to start and operate an automobile, you have to have a fully functioning electrical system, right? You have to have a battery, uh, you have to have an alternator, you've got spark plugs. So what are, what are those likened to? Well, those are the, the vitamins and minerals that act as coenzymes and cofactors that give the body the ability to access the fuel in those kilocalories to then make ATP. You really can't have one without the other, right? If, you're, if your automobile has a full tank of gas, but the battery's dead, you're not going anywhere. If your automobile has a, a fully functioning electrical system, battery, alternator, and spark plugs, but no gas, again, you're not going to be going anywhere. So use that analogy, or I hope that analogy helps you to see that these nutrients work collaboratively to provide energy or ATP. You can't have one without the other. Uh, in particular, the B complex vitamins are vital for energy metabolism, as you'll see through the rest of this week's content. And so as a general rule, if you had a true deficiency in one or several B vitamins, then in fact you would experience that fatigue and tiredness that we spoke of earlier. There are many B complex or many vitamins that are come under the uh, sub the category of B complex. Those are thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, pyridoxine, folate, cobalamin, pantothenic acid, and biotin. I've got asterisks next to four of them thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, and folate because you've probably been exposed to that uh, foursome of vitamins. You've probably seen them perhaps when you've gone food shopping. Where might you have seen those four vitamins? Well, if you are someone that reads the ingredient list on food products, either before or been inspired to because of this class, maybe you've seen those four vitamins on something like bread, crackers, cereal, rice, or pasta. And the reason why is because those four vitamins, along with iron, the mineral iron, which is also discussed in this chapter, are part of the FDA's mandatory food fortification program. So years ago, the FDA decided that these four B vitamins and iron would have to be added back to all refined grain products. Okay, all refined grain products. So when you look on a, on a label of something like white rice or white bread or a white flour cracker, like say something like Ritz, or if you go and you buy some uh, semolina flour spaghetti noodles, those will all have these four vitamins added back to them because those vitamins were lost in the process of taking the whole grain and refining it. So, are these a good source of B vitamins, the B vitamins that are added back to them? 
they are a good source, but remember that that original product has now lost substantial protein, fiber, and other minerals, which are not added back. Well, that's all the time I have for uh, this chapter, and I hope to see you again on another chapter.